welcome back to We Love This Book. Very excitingly, today we're here with Judith Finnegan, whose new book, I Do Not Sleep, comes out this week. So, I was wondering how the kind of experience of writing it was different from writing a debut. With the first novel, with me anyway, um, I, I'd had the idea for so long um, before I even set pen to paper. You know, I was, uh, I, 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 you kind of nurse the idea in your heart for a long, long time. So, when you actually start to write it, you kind of know it inside out. Um, the second one, obviously, you, you, you're you then starting from scratch. This is not something you've been thinking about for absolutely ages. You've not, at least me, I'm not the kind of person um, who has a plot in my head all the time. I've got to feel, I've got to think quite deeply and feel quite deeply about something before I can write, start writing it. So the second one is, is, is more, much more stressful, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, because you, you're writing it more quickly. Uh, under deadlines, you by then, t by the time you get to your second novel, you've got a publisher, and uh, people are imposing much more pressures on you. Um, so it's not easy, but I enjoyed it, and and, and um, in some ways, it was I learned an awful lot from writing the first one. Okay, um, a lot, a lot about what did and what didn't work. So at least I managed to use that experience. In okay, this. yeah, and there was such an amazingly positive response to your first book. Bestseller. Yeah. And I was what was it like, kind of having when you're obviously well known for other things? Yes. The experience of being out there for something new. The first one was more daunting because, as you say, we've been sort of out there, obviously doing television programs, but also uh, very much involved with uh, a book club, our book club, and uh, for, for many years of our lives now, and um, which has been uh, amazingly successful. Which means that people, to our astonishment, they actually do obviously pay attention to what we say about books and so when you're writing your own you really know that you're putting yourself out there um, you are really I mean people might read it and say well this is rubbish and um, yet I thought that she knew a good book when she saw one right. <laughs> so obviously we can't trust her judgment anymore so that's all it's always in your mind and it, it is quite daunting let's talk about this one so could you are you able to sum it up in a few sentences I'll try um, <laughs> This one, I Do Not Sleep, is uh, the story of Molly. Molly is a teacher. Uh, she's married to another teacher, and they have two sons, um, grown up when the, uh, uh, when the story starts. And um, although they don't live in Cornwall, they live in Manchester, they've always loved going to Cornwall, because this book is set, again, in Cornwall, very much as my first one, Eloise, was. They've been going to Cornwall ever since their two sons were babies, and they know it, and they love it very well. And as they grow up, the boys, uh, became very good sailors and Joey the youngest one is 20 and he's at university and he goes on holiday one Easter with his best friend to have a sailing holiday in Polpera in Cornwall um, and while he's there although he's a good sailor for some reason he goes out on the boat on his own and the boat is he doesn't come back and the boat is discovered wrecked on the coast on the rocks uh, near Lou Island which is a very strange uh, genuine very strange and mysterious island um, just off the coast of Lewin in Cornwall, um, but his body is never found. The book opens five years after that accident, um, and for the first time, Molly is persuaded, his mother is persuaded against her better judgment to go down to Cornwall again for the first time since that happened um, for a holiday. And when she gets down there, she becomes, she finds absolutely obsessed with finding out what happened to Joey, and she can't rest and she can't sleep and uh, until she finds out wondering whether he's still alive or whether he's dead and she has, has some proof. So where did the idea for that come from, that kind of first seed of an idea? Yes, well partly it did come from a real life event but we've had a, a house in Cornwall ourselves and very soon after we bought our house down there um, there was a real life incident in the, the village of Polpera. There's a young man there called, uh, he was called Daniel actually, and he was only about 20 himself, and he uh, lived with his parents in Polpera, and he was a fisherman, and he loved it. He was a bit of a local hero. He was, he'd been on local television saying um, how wonder, how lo lovely it was, and he said, sat on his boat and said, this is my office, this is the sea, this is, this is the sky, isn't it beautiful, aren't I lucky? And he was but the local hero fisherman and one day exactly the same thing happened to him he went out alone on his boat and he never came back and the boat was found uh, wrecked but they never found Daniel the young boy at of all um, they never found him and the, again and that's what gave me the idea that his parents never had a body never had a body to bury and so I thought of the idea of not having it actually set with a family in Polpera but with the family who just loved Polpero 
um, and saw it as a glorious, wonderful, happy holiday place, and then this terrible thing happens to them. You obviously mentioned your book club, and I was wondering, do you, do you keep those really separate when you're writing, or are you informed by kind of that experience when you're, when you're writing? I, I, I think you, you have to be informed by everything. I don't think you can waste any experiences. I mean, we um, in the book club, we're, I'm, I love reading anyway. It's always been my, my major hobby. Um, since I was a kid, but um, uh, yeah, the books that we read in the book club and any breadth of reading, I think anybody who wants to write should absorb every influence and idea they get. It's not plagiarism, but it is just sensible to keep your mind and imagination open to other people's imagination, because that sparks off all sorts of thoughts in your own head, you know. And I really do think that if you don't like reading, if you don't like novels yourself, like reading them, I don't see how you can write. And are there more books coming? Well, that, yes, there will have to be, because I'm contracted, okay. to, write, I'm contracted to write another couple. So yeah. speaking of that, what are you reading at the moment? Oh gosh, well, we're reading the book club at the moment, so okay. other readings uh, just gone by the board, but I've been reading Queenie Hennessy, The Last Life of Queenie oh, Hennessy, yes. yes, and also uh, Sue Townsend's mm -hmm. The Woman Who Went to Bed for a Year. Um, I've read quite a lot of uh, crime thrillers, I love crime thrillers, okay. um, but at the moment, uh, for, and for the last three weeks or so, we've been completely locked into our next book club list, which okay. comes out in April. So how many have you got to whittle it down from? We've got down to about 25, okay. and we, but we, we've got to get those down to eight. It must be the toughest. It is tough. I mean, obviously there are two of us reading them, me and Richard, and, and men and women are quite different in the way they appreciate books, many really, and the kind of books they like. So there's often quite a bit of kind of vigorous, not argument, but discussion. Uh, this might be an impossible question. If you had to, can you pick one of your book club picks from the book club as a favourite, or is that too big of a question? It's a very big question because we've been doing this book club now since I think 2004. There are certain ones that stand out in my mind and they're the ones which perhaps made me cry or grabbed at my emotions. Okay. Uh, certainly one of them is The Time Traveller's Wife <laughs> by Audrey Hiffenegger. It's my all-time favourite Really? Book. I love I it, loved yeah. it. I, I, I love that book as well. We loved uh, David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas. Um, I loved, I mean, one of my other all-time favourite books, although this wasn't in our book club, is American Wife by Curtis Sittenfield. Okay. If you like Time Traveller's Wife, you'd probably like that. It's okay. very kind of intimate and emotional about marriage and love and everything. And I guess those are the kind of books I like best. Okay. Thank well, thank you ever so much. It's a great pleasure. Congratulations to your book. So, I Do Not Sleep, which is out this week, 12th of February. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you.